Okay, in this one we're going to use get elements by class name. First for the setup, I removed the previous script function. This is all just straight up what we get from Google Ads. Now let's just, everything's the same, so no need to reiterate that. Now we have this button here. We also have this button here. They both actually have the same class name. When I say class name, I mean the HTML attribute on that button is literally named single underscore add underscore two underscore cart underscore button. And there's a button and an alt. Okay. What we want to do is use this part here to identify the button. So when it's clicked, we're going to do that using JavaScript's select elements by class name. And I think it might be more interesting if I actually do it here in the console. So I control shift I. So if I say document, see how it's all blue? And we say dot get elements by class name. And then I copied it to my clipboard. It's called single underscore add blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, before I even execute this, it identifies an HTML collection, two. That's how many are on this page. And we can actually assign this to a variable if we wanted to. Instead, what we have generally been doing is we would say dot add event listener. And actually, we can't do that because we have to, you saw there were two, right? So we have two elements. They call them elements in JavaScript. So in order to select one, select the first one, it's at the index of zero, the second one is at the index of one, and so on. So to select the first element, we would do like that, and then we can do add event listener. And then we do the click and the function and the event. Okay. After that, everything is pretty much the exact same. There, there's no need to go through it just to show you. If you've watched the previous two videos, it's the exact same thing. The only difference is this get elements by class name. But what if we wanted to add event listeners to both buttons since they both share the same exact class name and they're both essentially the same button just in two different areas, right? Well, what we could do is use something called query selector all. This will be a little bit different. We are deep in the weeds if this is all like, if coding is not your forte, we are deep in the weeds at this point. But stick with me because this should be useful for quite a few people. So if this is your situation, you wanna create a conversion anytime this button or this button is clicked based on the class name since they both share the same class name. What we can do is go back to that page. So we're theoretically in our mind, we should be thinking we are editing the code to this page and we will place this script. This says document. So the whole page dot query selector all. And we put a dot that represents the class and then we put the name of the class. And then we can say, use it something that is called a for each. And then we give it a function and then we just give it a name. In this case, to make it logical and make sense, I'm naming it button with btn. And then we can say button dot add event listener, click, blah, blah, blah. This is the same stuff that we're already familiar with. The only thing that's different is this query selector all, tell it what class name it has, use a for each, and then you're back to the area that we've already learned. So hopefully, let's, let's actually test this out, update. Okay, we will F5, we look at our tags, we have gtag, remarketing and analytics. Let's go ahead and record the button click on the first one here. We click that. Okay, now we're gonna hit back. We're gonna go back here and we're gonna click this one. 
Okay, now let's click. Well, let's just stop the recording there. Now let's take a look at the report. Let's close up these pages. So this is the journey. We were on this page. We did fire the conversion code. I didn't reload the page. We fired the conversion code, so that first button click did work. We went to Amazon and we hit back. The page loaded all three of the tags, right? And then we clicked that second button and it fired the gtag.js and also the Google Ads conversion tracking. So it worked in both scenarios and then we went to Amazon. So we were able to fire an AdWords conversion on two buttons on the same page if they were clicked by adding an event listener to both of them. That's how you can do it. I think this is pretty as far as in, in the weeds I want to go for this particular course, but if you have any questions, definitely let me know.